Today we're going to talk about photoelectron emission spectroscopy, often abbreviated PES, which I'm often going to call it because it's a little bit easier to say. Now PES data is based on the photoelectric effect. The photoelectric effect is when you shine light, higher energy light, and those photons at a metal or some substance, and those photons are capable of bumping out the electrons, that sea of electrons that are in that metal, as it says here, waiting to be set free. And those inner electrons are knocked out, and the PES data is based on the energy of those electrons that are knocked out during that photoelectric effect. And remember, the photoelectric effect is what is the basis for solar energy, because if we collect those electrons and send them through a circuit, we can light a light bulb or um, produce electric energy that way. PES uses these electrons in an, a device like this, an electron analyzer, and sending it through this system, it will eventually end up with a spectrum that looks something like this with peaks, et cetera, in it, depending on how big the um, atoms are that, they, that we're analyzing at that point. Now, here's an example of hydrogen. Hydrogen, very simple, has one peak because it's only got one electron at a specific energy. So that's the only peak that you're going to see. Notice that when we get to helium, the peak is a little larger. And the reason is because whatever's going on with that atom, now we know this now, but when they were first analyzing this data, all they knew was that here's this other electron, and it's at the same energy as the first electron, so it must be pretty much in the same position. The peak is a little bit larger, which shows us there's two electrons there. Now we know now that helium and hydrogen have electrons in the 1s sublevel. Helium has two, hydrogen only has one electron there. Now look at how, what happens when we get to lithium. Evidently, whatever was going on in the atom, as far as those early scientists were concerned, that particular energy level could only hold two electrons. The third electron had a lower energy. Now, keep in mind, it's at a higher energy level. These are our 1s electrons. This is actually a 2s electron we discovered later. But that electron is at a lower energy. Why? Well, it's because as we look at these energy levels, we've got the first, the second, and the third energy level, but these energies for, these, for this PES data, is, these are based on ionization energy. And ionization energy, remember, is the amount of energy it takes to remove the electron. We sometimes talk about in terms of energy rope. The lower the energy level, for instance, energy level one for this first electron, the more energy rope, the more ionization energy it's going to require to rip that electron away. So that particular, those 1s electrons are going to end up having the highest energy of all of them. Those are the ones that are closest to the nucleus and the hardest to remove. When we get to the second energy level, it requires less energy to remove the electron. And the third energy level requires even less energy to remove it. So it may sound a little backwards when you're looking at this PES data, but you've got to remember it's because it's measuring the ionization energy, not the energy level of the electron. Those are kind of opposites if you think about it. So now we go on up to beryllium boron. Um, beryllium has its 1s here, its 2s electrons here. It happens to have two in both of those. And so far the pattern has been holding that we only get to have two electrons at any particular energy level. So here's 2s2, here's something different, we don't know, but it's going to be 
it's close, it's in the second energy level, we eventually realize it's the P1. And we get to carbon, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, and we might be thinking if we were an early scientist that the next electron is going to hop into an even higher. Maybe we're calling it the 2 something else. But then we notice, oh, that's weird. We've got this, excuse me, I labeled that wrong. We've got this 1s here, 2, 2s2, and this particular energy level or sublevel, whatever it is, can actually hold three. In fact, we see that it can hold four or five. We eventually realize it can hold six. So it's a different kind of sublevel, a different kind of energy state. It can hold six different electrons. So they called it a P the different type but again we can tell that because each time we add the electron in we just have that same energy the peak just keeps getting bigger now I left off neon because I want you to think about what neon would be neon is comes right after fluorine let's think about what it would be right here we would have the 1s2 2s2 2p5 for fluorine if we were going to put in for neon, where would those fall? Well, think about it. As you go across the periodic table, you're getting more and more protons in the nucleus, so your nuclear charge is getting stronger. We're going to see the 2s pop up a little bit higher for neon because it's going to take even more energy to get those electrons away. We're going to see the 2s, again, pop up a little bit higher still having two electrons in it. This one's going to be a little higher as well, and it's going to be a little taller because this one will actually hold six if it's neon. Remember, we're showing what would happen with neon. A little bit higher in energy for all of those sublevels because we've got a higher nuclear charge. It's going to require more energy to remove those electrons. So now on to sodium. We have our 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1, magnesium, same situation. We just end with 3s2 in this case. And then we pop down to aluminum and we have our 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. And looks like we go to another similar energy, but slightly lower. So this must be the 3p1. And we may say a pattern says, okay, I bet this one's going to go up to 6. And indeed it does. We see that silicon has 2p2. Going on to our next page, went a little far. Phosphorus has 2p3. Sulfur, 2p4. On to chlorine, 2p5. And 2p6. And if we're paying attention as those early scientists are, we think, okay, now we've hit six, we must be going to end up the next time with a higher energy level, and indeed we do. And I'm going to write these down because one of the things I expect you to be able to do is to label the different peaks. So this is two, uh, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1, this one becomes 4s2. And so we think, okay, the next one I would bet is going to be 4P, and it's probably going to be a little bit uh, lower in energy because that's been our pattern all the way through has been the next peak should be somewhere down here. And we look at our next example, the last one I'm going to include, and look what happens. It doesn't occur at a lower energy. It occurs at a slightly higher amount of energy to remove it. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, this is our first indication, our first incident of overlapping. We have our 1s, our 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, the 4s, and then pops in the 3D. 
So that's our first instance of overlapping, slightly lower energy level, but filling later. So that's our data, that's what, where we get all the information for our electron structure. And AP is really concerned now that we know where this information came from. So you need to be able to analyze these PES spectra.